Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, it's a happy little Wednesday morning. Going to be a full day. Got a recording session starting in a few minutes, and uh, had that for most of the morning. And short break for the afternoon, then go teach karate class, and then uh, do rehearsal tonight. So full day. That's all right. I'm used to it, and I enjoy being busy. And I was thinking about tone this morning. And any of you that listen to, to Stefan Grappelli, you know. He would do all those nice slides and had such a robust tone. And my violin instructor when I was a kid was Wayne Gord. And Wayne had an incredibly robust and thick big rich sound too and I think that was what always impressed me about him two things about Wayne his tone was incredible and then his swing feel because man even playing simplest thing he's had it just you couldn't keep your feet still when Wayne was playing the fiddle it was just incredible to me and uh, I was always motivated by the feel that he got out of the instrument and of course Grappelli was the same thing swung so hard you know and uh playing all those tunes. And then later on, I discovered, uh, you know, of course, a lot of great bluegrass fiddle players like Kenny Baker, who had a nice tone. And, uh, of course, Itzhak Perlman blew me out completely. I remember getting that first vinyl record of his back in the day that I had purchased. It was on Angel Records, I believe it was. And um, he had that tune on there. It was a, it was a, oh gosh, I can't think of what the guy's name that wrote this. Uh, Was one of just t butchering it, but that's that piece that was on that uh, that uh, it's not Perlman album that was great, and he was a paradigm shift for me too. And his tone was great. And I was thinking this morning about how important tone is at the, at the instrument, because who cares how good your facility is, how many notes you can play, and how fast you are, and how accurate you are, if your tone sounds like the fingernails on a chalkboard, right? It's not pleasant. And uh, tone is a big deal. Of course, now everyone was going to tell you, oh, it's the instrument. Well, the instrument plays maybe, it, it's a percentage game. It's got it's got its role. Maybe it's 10%, maybe it's 90%, who knows. But it's it's got its own role in it. The bow has some role in it. Um, not what everyone thinks it is, I think. I have opinions on that. And then, of course, the strings, right? And it's all kind of about a pairing, too. Do the strings that you use work well with your instrument, right? You know? Uh, I'm using the uh, Kaplan Ammos. I love those. But I also use the Zyx a lot of times on my electric violins. Now, I've used Zyx on this one before, too. Um, I like the Zyx strings. They're really, really good. They last forever, and I like that about them. And the tone stays consistent, and the intonation's great with them. The only thing with them is there's a certain robustness that on this instrument, I don't think they access it, where the Kaplan's kind of do access that robust sound. But then, like on an electric instrument, I prefer the Zyx because I'm looking for a different tonal registry on the electric instrument. So, you know, it's one of those things. Now, so bow, this is a weird one too. So bow tension has a lot to do with it. You know, you can crank the thing down and get it really tight, or you can have it looser. And on a microscopic level, if you look at it, the bow hair tends to wrap around the string some. But it's not really about pulling the string to the side as much as it is twisting the string and letting it loose as it breaks loose from the bow and it spins that's this number so it's not one of these it's not a linear movement it's a circular movement so the trick is to get as much twist out of the string as possible with the least amount of effort to open up the envelope of the string so you get bigger tone right and it has there's so much to do with all that so the bow tension has a lot to do with how well it's going to actually activate the string so the, pro the thing you run into there is, if the stick is a soft stick, now what I mean by that is if it's real spongy and doesn't have a lot of strength to it, then the hair will be spongy and only too spongy. And you can't, you'll have to crank the hair down to get it really, really tight to make the stick be alive and bounce when you need it to, to do spiccato and staccato and different things that you're going to be doing. If you're doing ricochet bowing, especially, you're going to have to have that stick where it's got some spring in it. And so if the stick doesn't have enough tension, if it's not strong enough, then what happens is you wind up putting all the pressure against the hair, making it do the stick's job, and then it can't do its own job of producing tone. 
right? And so you also run into that same thing if the stick is too rigid, then the hair winds up having to be too rigid again, and you get the same idea. It's the same thing. And it's more controllable if it's really, really rigid, but you're going to get bad tone again. So you've got to find that bow stick that's consistently has the right amount of rigidity for the hair tension that you like to use. So there's a lot of, a lot of variables there. Now, I use these Coda bows. I love these things. This, this is the Luma, and I've got a couple of these. And I've got some, you know, 200-year-old bows that, that are great bows, but I love these things, and they're really consistent. And uh, I find that for the hair tension that I like to run, they work great. So... Uh... <laughs> It still sounds nice, you know. I got a friend that lives here locally. Um, he's the guy that does my repair work for me, Nathan Agdepa. He's a Nathan's one of the nicest humans on the planet. But what's funny about Nathan is I've seen that guy. He can take a fiddle that is a piece of junk. And he can play it, and it still sounds great. He's got that unique ability to pull tone. So that would actually be... I should get him on here with me one day and interview him and ask him you know, what his secret for getting his tone is because he gets a beautiful tone out of his instrument. It's impressive. And uh, and plus, he's just a cool guy. So if you, if, any, if you don't know Nathan and you live here locally in Harrison, especially if you're a musician, you got to meet this guy. He's as good a human being as I've ever known. So he's a super guy. And very talented, too. Good musician, and just like I say, he's a tone monster. He knows how to get tone out of the, out of the violin, and even out of uh, other instruments as well. So, uh, but yeah, so I hope everyone's having a good morning. And I'm off to get ready to uh, track some stuff for my client. Y'all have a good day. Be blessed and keep it real.